your ultimate Christian entertainment TV channel, Footprint TV. Here to bless. Here with me on Footprint TV are two great men of God that I really admire. They are doing so well in their mandate, you know, in their, in their calling. And I am privileged to have them here. As of Pastor Payne, who he's been here before, yes, yes. yes of um, Disciple Nations Church. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pastor Andrew Anesi Yapa, all the way from Kumasi. Hey, I'm excited to be here today. We've been looking forward to seeing you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you for having me. For, for coming. And uh, I know we're going to have. <laughs> Very, very interesting. Um, I'm laughing because they all don't know what we're going to talk about right here. <laughs> but I'm very confident. <laughs> it's so confident in them that I, I know that whatever it is, they'll be able to hammer it well for me. Deal with it squarely. You know, you're welcome. How are you all doing? Oh, yeah, good. good. Ministry. I know Disciple Nation celebrating seven years yes. this year. Yes. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I we all can't wait for this. Seven years already. Yes. We thank God. And Pastor Andrew, what's up with you? Ah, we are we are we are hanging in there. And <laughs> CM Kumati is also doing very well. Great, and, great, um, great. We'll, we'll great. Be seven years in, in November too. Wow. Oh, wow. Yes. We, we and and I saw that you guys had a great yeah. event, like a pre Val's Day event yes, yes. with Nancy. Yes. Oh, it was it was really good. I mean oh, if I went Kumasi. She, Kumata, she was a great blessing. I know, I yes, know. Yes. She's she's really good. Um, in the area, wow! And uh, I know you're all the two of you are all lay preachers. Like when we say in some denomination, lay preachers probably might mean something else. But what, for my understanding, preachers that are equally working in the secular field, right? Am yes. I right? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. How is that? Uh, we, we call it Bible fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. Have you been criticized about that before? Like some other preachers who are doing the food are like, we, 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 we get that a lot. Okay. But I, I feel that if your church hasn't grown to a level where it can financially sustain you, I think it's the best. It doesn't distract you? No. No, really. No, really. Are you sure? No. <laughs> So that if business or um, work demands that like you need to travel out of the country and you know that your, your church isn't too stable to handle a guest preacher or someone else to handle them, no, what, what are you going to do? You stay behind. <laughs> <laughs> so you lose your job? Yes. I mean, there are, there are challenges in everything. Mm. You know, so once there is a challenge, you find a way out. That's right. Yeah. Great. And Val's Day, you also had a great... Um, Service. I mean, it was not a fast day service no, yet because no. I don't feel a fast day. I spoke for relationship. Okay. Yeah. I know. I mean, he's also an author. Yes. Yeah. Your book. What's the title? Um, singles dialogue. Singles dialogue. Yeah. Yes. You, you all need to get that book, especially if you're single. It's going to bless your lives. Now, now that we're talking about um, relationships and all that, I want us to look at marriage. Um, the Word of God says. Um, the marital bed is undefined. Did I get it right? It's, it's yes, best yes. like that. Yes. What, what does the Bible really mean by that? <laughs> Who's going to take that? Okay. Let's let, let my brother start. <laughs> <laughs> I think after that, I need to actually mention your name and give the question. Yeah, yeah, so let's do some things, so. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going to take that? What does it really mean? Because it looks like people are confused with, with, with that um, so, Bible verse. So um, let's, let's, let's look at the scripture. Okay, great. Um, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Mm. Uh, so it says that marriage should be honored by all mm. and the marriage bed kept pure okay for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral hey. so this is self-explanatory so basically if you are married God expects that you will stick to your spouse so any other sexual relationship that you have with another person outside your marriage is sinful. Okay. And God says that he's going to judge you. Well, I like that. So do you want to add anything to it? I think he, he said all. Oh, um, mm. God, in a way, is giving us um, boundaries when it comes to sex. All right. Even though I'm sure we have Christian liberty. Yeah. But like, like Paul said, all things are permissible but not all things are expedient. Mm. It means that once you get married, God creates a certain level of boundary as to how you can have sex and when, who, who you can have sex with and when you can have sex. <laughs> Interesting, but um, 
the other um, explanation some other people have given to this particular scripture is whilst whatever happens within the confinement of marriage or within our marital boundary, once I'm having it with my husband or my spouse, it is clean, it is pure because I am doing that particular thing with my husband on a marital bed. Yes, to the extent that um, um, it is right. You know, 1 Corinthians 14, 40, it said that everything should be done in an orderly manner. Mm. And so as long as it is right for Christians to be involved in whatever you think you must do with your spouse, why not? But if it, it is not right, then there is a problem. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so what is not right? All right, let me come to that. Because I, there's a married, there's a couple, they're married. Okay, whatever they do on their marital bed, whilst they are not committing adultery or anything like that, then it is undefiled, it's holy, it's acceptable, it's a form of worship. Am I lying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. But, uh, but uh, it depends. So it depends on what? Because the word of God is straight. Once it's, it's within the confines of marriage, I am right. Whatever I do with my husband or whatever I do with um, whoever I'm married to, let me put it that way. Yes, I think Pastor Andrew mentioned earlier on that um, we have the right to do everything, but not everything is permissible. Yeah. Mm. You know, so yes, we have the right to do it, but the question is, is it right? Is it permissible? So, are we going to go through a list of what is right and what is wrong? I mean, because I, I, I don't even know how to put this question. The thing is, the Bible didn't write it explicitly, like explicitly, <laughs> in in the Word of God that oh, this is right. Or this is wrong. He, the Bible says, whatever the two of you do on your marital bed, I've blessed it for you. Go and, and live in peace. I'm asking this question because I'm driving at a point. Some time ago, I remember Pastor Anesi put put up a post, and he got a lot of engagement and a lot of banter on there because he said that certain people have introduced certain things into their into their sexual life as in, as in mari uh, marriage couples have done that, and he feels that it is wrong. Um, it is not healthy. God doesn't approve of that. And I saw a lot of comments coming out like, we've not seen anything like that in the Bible. God hasn't said anything like that in the Bible. Once we are married, we can do whatever we want. You know, that is why I'm, I'm driving at that. And I would want the two of you, I, I think I'll, Pastor Nancy will, will start that. Some of the things that you think is overboard. Because people like counselors are saying, oh, you spice up your marriage. You need to do this. You need to do that. When is it like too much? Okay, so, so there are a few things you need to ask yourself. The first one is, how do we approach sex? Um, is, it, is it sex for pleasure or is it for procreation? Mm. Now, when it, comes for, when it comes to sex for pleasure, there are so th questions you need to ask yourself. One, what is acceptable pleasure and what is mm. unacceptable pleasure? <laughs> okay, because yes. what you should know is that pleasure is relative. What is, right. what is pleasurable to you may not be pleasurable to me. Okay, so the one where the two of us agree. Yes, yes, <laughs> but you see, there, there are also, like I, I mentioned earlier, there are also boundaries on what sh you should do on the marital bed. For example, if I tell you that what gives me pleasure is threesome. Hey, but that one you are introducing someone else. <laughs> no, no, but we, 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 we are, you see, the, the challenge with the challenge with the Christian. We can't pick and choose, eh? Yes, the challenge with the Christian today is trying to use ungodly methods to achieve godly results. Hey, go for hobby. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. trying to employ ungodly methods to achieve godly results. Hmm. Now, for many of us who were in the world before proud to come into Christianity, yeah. a lot of people were hooked on to pornography. That's right. Uh, some were hooked um, on to the use of sex toys uh, and, and then a whole lot of uh, vibrators uh, and then the, the others. But you see, when, when you become a Christian, the Bible talks about the fact that you need to renew your mind. Mm. Okay? Because the mind is not saved. Mm. Your spirit is saved, but your mind is not saved. Okay, that is how come there are people who are still married and they are introducing the pornographic stuff into their marital bed and they expect their wives to be able to roll over, jump, touch the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, so these people are just acting, oh, they are acting in these things, but you expect your wife to do that. So you talk about pornography, a lot of people actually think that if two people who are married are watching it to learn some new skill, or, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the, before, I, before, before my brother comes in, you see, the thing is that I have heard stories of people who were having sex with their partners, 
and then their mind their mind was on someone else mm. so i'm someone they watched um, <laughs> in a pornographic scene or something That's right. okay and secondly these are people who are paid actors yeah Okay. You can't compete. You can't compete with them. Mm. And uh, uh, furthermore, um, for example, you should also know that some of these people they take medication. So yeah. if I expect my partner to be able to um, have sex with me, like same I way. saw it the same way I saw it in a movie, it's 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 it's, it's not it's not the best. Mm. Mm. Wow. You you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what what is the motive? What is the rationale? What do you hope to achieve? Pleasure. Uh, to adults. <laughs> watching two adults on TV having sex Set. before you can be motivated to have sex. I think there is a problem with you. Hey, wow! Honestly, I think there is a problem. <laughs> and and, and see, we must understand that hmm. as a Christian, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Okay. And, and that is one thing all of us must appreciate. Number two, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You cannot be in Christ and still try to hold on to your old way of doing things. Mm. Then you are not in Christ. And so that is what we've been trying to teach. That let us appreciate the fact that we are in a different world altogether. We are guided by the word of God. We are guided by the spirit of God. I mean, why do you want to watch people on screen having sex so you and your spouse will be motivated? To have sex. Oh, not the motivation has that, that you know, learn one or two. No, no, what, what, what? <laughs> there, there is a scripture that says that the spirit that you have received mm -hmm. will teach you all things and you need not man to teach you anything. Okay. You, you understand? You are, you are sufficient enough with the help of the Holy Spirit. And, and that is what we must appreciate. Watching pornography for me is wrong. Another thing is that how do you how do you learn from two people who are who are sinners? Exactly. These are not these are not these are these are ungodly people. Yes. So how do you learn from two people who are sinning? Yes. Oh, but you, you can learn from anywhere. You can learn. You yes, know, but so so the so. The Bible actually asks us to really look at the ants. Look, I mean, consider it. We look at these people. Look at if we are looking. The Bible draws a line between um, the world, the people of this world, and yeah. then the, yeah. the people who are in the light. Okay, so I can't I can't copy. No. what I see sinners do and then try to enact the same thing in my bedroom and mm. think that I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track. But here is the case where, uh, okay, yes, we are not supposed to watch all these things. People of the world are watching and learning and they come and they, they destroy Christian marriages. And the young lady B who knows how to do all these things come in and take somebody's husband away because the wife doesn't know what to do to give pleasure to the husband. It's Madonna in the first place. Mm -hmm. Any husband that can be stolen. <laughs> you, you, you understand? Listen, any man that can be snatched mm. has a problem. Wow. Has, has, has morally has a problem. You see, Christians should not behave as though we are weak, we are helpless. You know, there, there is somebody out there who is more stronger and more powerful than us, and if we don't catch up with them. Um, you know, will be late and all. No, it's wrong. Okay. It is wrong. A man who is born again, a man who fears God, will never, ever go outside his, his, his marriage and have an affair. When he's not having the right kind of pleasure, he's looking you for. work on your marriage. What do you work on it? Probably the vibrator might help us work on it. Okay, so. Add a little spice. So, you so know. spice in your marriage is relative. Okay. All right. What may spice your marriage may not be, may not spice my marriage. So the vibrator may spice my marriage. Okay, you see, I, I tell I tell people that I tell people that go to any man who is married to a woman who is hooked to um, who was formerly hooked to yeah. the use of vibrators yeah. because the rest of your life you have to spend your life competing with something that you cannot compete yeah. with. Mm. All right. And mm. a lot of us are, for want of the right way to use, damaged wow. and perverted. Mm. Mm. Okay, so why do we then bring a perversion into our homes? Mm. This is a machine that can work for hours. hours. Yeah. Mm. All right, that is how come many of us get into marriage expecting our men yeah. to be able to perform for... To behave like machines. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you expect the man to perform for one, 30 minutes, 3 hours, 2 hours, 4 hours. And so when you meet a man who is not able to meet up to that standard, you think the man is not doing well. And you want to look elsewhere. Exactly. And secondly, we also know, you should know that these are third parties you are introducing to your marriage. Mm. 
that, that, that is something a lot of people didn't get it, especially from the post that you made on. Yes. What do you mean by third party? This is inanimate, like it's it's an abstract thing. It's 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 plastic. It's there's no life in it. How is there, that there thing? Is, there is as long as it is able to satisfy you, there is life in it. Mm. Oh yes. Yes. Mm. And and third parties because if anything you can use as a substitute to your spouse, it's a third party. Yeah. If if your husband well, is they are doing it together. I mean no, in agreement. No, for example, so you know it's addictive, right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know. Uh, right, you know it, it's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it, but I've read about it. People have shared. No, yes, I don't know. Yes, I don't know. People have people have shared experiences with some of us. We 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 counsel people, and 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 the question is that questions you should ask yourself that. So if my partner is not here, can I still resort to the use of? Is it better than committing adultery? Pardon? It's a third party. So that is how come you get to a point where you feel. Well, I don't need my spouse again. Yeah. I think I can still. But the challenge is that what we also don't know is that the sex toys are limited. Yeah. Okay. okay. The, the vibrator cannot kiss you. The vibrator cannot cuddle you like how your man will cuddle you. So what are some of the common things as, as, as a pastor? Okay, let me ask um, Pastor Nancy first. Some of the common issues that have come to your table concerning these third party um, things that people have introduced to the marital bed. Um, first of all, addictions. Hmm serious addictions and some are so addicted to it that even when their husband is sleeping with them or their wives is sleeping with them they still want to use their sex toys yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for it you feel that your partner has a challenge i think there are sex therapists who can help sometimes even going to see a doctor who can help with the right medication and sometimes it's even psych uh, psychological yeah. okay all right sex is an art and i know there are people who are there are people who don't achieve orgasm through the normal penetration yes, yes but right. Some also, have, some also are married to men who are impotent. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And some yes. <laughs> <laughs> some are married to men who are impotent and may have issues of, like that. Some mm -hmm. also are married to men who have um, premature ejaculation and yeah, all that. But right. these are issues that can be resolved. Mm -hmm. All right. I, I think that um, a lot of people are into so many things because, as I said, we are doing it within um, the confines of marriage and they feel it's, it's all right. We have mentioned pornography, we have mentioned sex toys. What are some of the other things that people easily engage in that you think that, no, this, this is not Christian. As a, as a um, um, married people, you, you shouldn't bring it as a third party. Don't bring it into your marriage. I, I, basically, I think that we, we, we should be decent. Mm. You see, once, once you are morally upright, certain thoughts wouldn't even flash your mind. Certain things wouldn't come your way. I always tell people that if you have the spirit of God in you, you don't need a man to tell you what is right and what is wrong. Mm. You will know because the spirit of God that lives in you will prompt you. You understand? So we will appeal that as much as we can, let us try to be to be decent. Let us try to, as 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 Pastor Andrew said. Your spouse cannot compete with a machine. No, no, no. no. That's just impossible. Oh, but people so, actually even... I'm cutting you. I won't say them not cutting because I'm actually cutting you. <laughs> you can come back to that. People use chocolate, ice cream, all manner of things to spice up their, um, their sexual life and all that. that Are they not third party? That's oral sex, right? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Are you not introducing a third party to the marriage? That's, that's oral sex, right? So it's okay? No. Um, you know the bible is silent in a lot of things for yeah. example yeah. if you read songs of solomon uh -huh. 2 3 if i don't know if i can read it it talks about the fact that um, the fruit of okay. songs of solomon 2 3 says um, his fruit is sweet to my taste mm. and people are taking it literally not <laughs> metaphorically yeah. really yes yeah. all right so so these are stuffs you should be thinking about but i think to to your question um anal sex yeah, it's wrong for me. Yes, but but there are Christians who think anal sex is good. Okay. Once, once, you see, you see, well, if, if we are married and we are doing it. Yes, so. once it gives us pleasure, and most of the times mm. it's it's from our it's from our fantasies. Mm. Okay. One true. thing we should know is that um, lust is insatiable. Yeah. Mm. You can never satisfy. Once you start feeding it. it goes exactly, on and, on and then it becomes like a bottomless pit. And you, you go deeper and deeper and deeper, and the next time your partner would w want you to go into uh, the neutrism. 
Mm. There are people who, if you're having sex with them, if you don't inflict pain, Yes, 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 they I'm don't really enjoy it. They, they, don't, they right. don't have orgasm and all yeah. that. So this the question is crazy. The question is what is what is what don't we have boundaries as Christians again? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Say that again. Mm. It, see, we, we try to copy everything from the world. Once it gives and what we what we also don't know is that we should also know that some of these things we copy comes from the pornographic industry. Mm. You know the use of sex toys and all those ones came from the pornographic industry. Okay, so why copy something from the world and bring it to our marital space? Hmm. <laughs> this is interesting. Um, and my the truth yeah. is that for most of these people, when you engage them, deep down within them, they want to change. Yeah. They want to they stop. Want to stop. If, I don't know whether you've been following this lady, um, Iona. Yes, yes, yes. Sharing yes. her experience. Yeah you know, in the world. Yeah. And she says one thing, she said, most of the people in the world, they know what they are doing from, but they just can't stop. Yeah. Mm. So why do you want to copy something that people know is wrong, yet cannot stop? Why do you want to copy it? Why is the church not talking about it? Well, the church, I think the church is not talking about sex in general. Mm. <laughs> it's true. Yes, we portray sex as dirty, yeah. as unclean and unholy. But what we also don't know is that what we also know is that sex was created by God. And the Bible said whatever he created was good or is good. Okay? It is God who gave us our emotions. Yeah. When when he created Adam and Eve, mm. the first instruction he gave them was to be fruitful and multiply. That's right. The word fruitfulness is not an agricultural term, it's a reproductive term. So it was God who instructed men to have sex. But you see, Anything God creates, the devil also tries to, uh, for want of the right way, to use pervert. Mm. Okay, so that's why we are having this conversation. The church has not really done well, especially when it comes to this topic. And we tell people don't have sex, don't have sex. But yeah, so many we, other things. Yes, we, what, what we should be telling them is why they should not be having sex when they are not married. And if they are married, we should have a session where we teach them uh, well, godly exactly ways right. of what's appropriate, mm -hmm. what is acceptable, even on the married bed. What, what, what is the dangers, quickly? I mean, I, I'm not, I know you said some in person, but why is it so important that we don't introduce these things? You mentioned addiction. Any other reason? Lack of satisfaction. Mm. Because once something else is giving you satisfaction, then your spouse wouldn't be able to satisfy you. Mm. So that is the danger. That is wow. the danger. Mm. Any other um, substitution, like I mentioned. Mm. Mm. Okay, so for example, your husband travels. Your husband is a soldier who has traveled out of the country, and then now you start using a vibrator. Then you get to a point where you realize the vibrator cannot cuddle or kiss you. So let me look for a brother who is around to mm. do that job for me. So eventually, these things probably lead to adultery. Exactly. Especially, especially uh, what's the case where your partner that doesn't agree to it? One party has a fantasy. He or she wants to fulfill one but said no this is not christian I, I don't want to do this are you not driving your partner away exactly. I mean, how do you deal with this, these issues when they come up even as pastors and when they when it, when it comes to your, your table well as, as as pastors the greatest resource we have is the word of god mm. and so we always teach people from god's perspective uh, perspective another thing we do is to pray um i mean without prayer we will not be able to overcome some of these things. Yeah. Nobody overcomes a weakness by just receiving a counsel. Because every weakness has a demonic root. Mm. Yeah. Every weakness has a demonic root. And so most of the time we engage in prayer. We, we, I mean, if you talk to people like Apostle Lawson, they will tell you they would actually take you through. Which is very yeah, true. Yeah. You know, uh, a young lady came to see me. <laughs> Um, uh, on Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, and she came with an issue that had to do with job and all of that. Yeah. But whilst I was praying with her, I saw a marine spirit. Mm. You know, so I dealt with it and I prayed for her. Then she sent me a message yesterday and said, I have been having issue with this spirit sleeping with me, you know, in my dreams all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Even past this storm, I have my oh, you, you understand? So yeah. every weakness has a demonic root, and we deal with it through prayer, fasting, and trusting God mm. for the mm. Powerful, powerful. Now, the question again, 
my husband wants it, I cannot do it because I'm a Christian. What, how should I handle him so he doesn't go out to look for it? Like, like Pastor Jerry mentioned, um, prayer. Mm. Okay, after prayer, I believe that every marriage must also have an accountability system. Okay. So for example, uh, in my house, my wife knows who's to call yeah. when I start fooling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that. <laughs> yes, yes. And I also know who to call when my wife starts messing up. Yeah. All right. So once, once you start triggering the, the essence of prayer, then you can also um, speak to your counselors. That's how come when it comes to marriage, especially as the, our traditional marriages, they would ask. So who, who, um, the fam both families should nominate. Someone. Nominate someone or mm. one or two people who would, when there are issues, conflict that can be resolved. Yeah. And then, secondly, sometimes even your pastors, mm. you can approach. Or maybe your, your partner may not feel comfortable. I think one resource most churches have not really um, used is post-marital counseling. Post-marital counseling. Yeah, we hardly go for that. Yeah, we do. Some of sometimes we, we think that if it's not broken, we shouldn't fix it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we think that going for post-marital counseling means that your marriage has gotten to a point where it cannot be fixed but mm. i think it's something we should be able to use so go, to, go and see your pastor your pastor calls the person um try and see if we can find a solution if not then i don't know i don't know the next step <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a serious issue because yeah. some of these things are, are christians are gradually normalizing them exactly. they're making them feel that oh it is normal even that issue of side check right it's like people are normalizing it now like it's, it's normal no, and to have a side it check is, it's normal it is, to it is an agenda like that. yes mm. the enemy will always have an agenda so it is an agenda yeah. Anything the devil promotes is part of his agenda. Mm. How come mm. we are sexualizing the world? These days you see a pepsodent advert and then you see a naked woman. Yeah. Yeah, so it's part of the devil's agenda and all that. And for the truth is that many of us, for example, many Christian married, uh, many Christian couples, when you ask, when you talk to them about masturbation, they know, they know masturbation is it's wrong. wrong yeah. They will tell you, me, I will never masturbate. Yeah. However, they can still use a vibrator to masturbate. Yeah. It's true. Wow. Our time is up, our time we have to go, but I don't know when we're ever going to get Papa and Nessie here in Accra, but I'm sure God will make a way. I know that Pastor Payne is here, he's here with us, and I'm sure we'll see him very soon, because the Disciples Nation is seven years. Seven years, hooray. But I mean, somebody might be watching us right now with a weakness. I mean, I'm sure probably he or she wouldn't even be confident enough to discuss with their partners. How do we get in touch with, with you, starting from Pastor Nancy? Uh, and then it comes to you. Okay, so uh, can so so you can you can you? Um, you can you can contact me um, through my Facebook social media handles. Okay. Facebook is Papa Nesi Aqua. Uh, Facebook is Papa Nesi Aqua. Um, YouTube is Pastor Andrew, and then um, Instagram is Papa Nesi. Okay, yeah. great, great, Pastor Jerry. Yes, you can also uh, get in touch with me on Facebook, uh, Pastor Jerry Penu. The Penu is P A N O E. On Instagram, it is Jerry Penu. And then on YouTube, it is Disciple Nations Church. Nice, nice. Thank you all so much. But quickly before you all leave, anything on your heart that the Holy Spirit, you know, inspired you to share with the people out there, please um, share with us quickly because we, we can't let you go. Yes, like as a Christian, you can enjoy your marriage. You don't need any extras. Just trust God, love your spouse, and have fun. Have fun within the, confine, the, the, the confinement of Christianity. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you too. Uh, so sex is, sex, sex is not wrong. Sex is not dirty. Sex was created by God to be enjoyed by the couple. However, God also gave us boundaries. And don't forget that whatever you do, remember that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you all so much um, for, for I me. Mean, joining us today thank you for having us yes um definitely we'll talk again yes. and i just pray that the god up there will bring the finances <laughs> <laughs> wish you all the best thank you know you. and thank definitely you. i'll be in kumatsu one of these days you see me yeah sure Pastor Pedro, i'm here with him yes yes, yes, yes. as the seventh anniversary there yeah, we did for him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's what you do is coming i know yeah, i know yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I believe you've had like a, we've had a fruitful conversation here, and I know that you've learned one thing or the other. And it might be difficult, probably you're already addicted to these things. And even as a single person, you know, and you know you need to break this before you even get into marriage. And Christians, please, certain things are not Christian. You know, stop normalizing these things. If people are using big, big words for it. We are 